Hey, I'm Keith from eMotors Direct, Canada's largest motor search engine. If a gearbox isn't sized correctly, it can easily fail and lead to downtime. Today, we'll cover how to size your gearbox. We do have a wide selection of speed reducers for electric motors at eMotorsDirect.ca. After this video, you'll be able to plug your information right into the site and find what you're looking for. As always, comment with your questions or contact our team directly using the link in the description. And if you like this content, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. This helps us expand our audience and keep building new content. What's a gearbox? They modify the speed and torque of a motor. When a gearbox reduces speed, it simultaneously increases the torque or turning force at the output. You'll typically find the gear reducers in conveyor systems, industrial equipment, machine tools, really any scenario that requires changes to speed and torque. Some of our slowest motors are 900 rotations per minute, which is pretty fast for a conveyor system to move. You wanna keep those items on the conveyor, not flying full speed into the wall. This is one reason to use a gearbox, control the speed of the motor. Also, consider a conveyor system that moves items through an aggregate site. A lot of turning force is required to move that weight up a conveyor. This is another reason you'd wanna use a gearbox, control the torque of the motor. Okay, so you either wanna control the speed or the torque of the motor, but how do you select the right gearbox for the job? You'll consider a few things, number one, how many hours per day are you running it? Number two, output RPM and torque. Number three, motor mounting. Let's consider how many hours per day the gearbox is running, which will inform our service factor. Service factor defines a safety margin to account for overload. For example, a service factor of 1.0 means that a gearbox has no safety margin and would easily fail if overloaded. A gear reducer with a service factor of 2.0 could handle double the required application horsepower and is highly oversized for the task. The gearbox's service factor directly impacts the durability and resistance of pitting and bending fatigue of the gear teeth. Increase your safety margin if you have a wide variation in load. Also, consider how many hours per day your motors will run. The more hours your motor is running, the more you'll want to oversize your gearbox to allow for sufficient cooling. Calculating service factor isn't an exact science. In practice, it's based on practical experience guidelines rather than a formula. If you aren't sure, don't guess, as you could easily overload the gearbox. Consult with a gearing expert or feel free to drop us a comment below. Okay, now we'll need to consider output torque and RPM, which determines our gear ratio. You may need to consult with an engineer to determine your required torque. When you need to decrease the output speed, we'll need a smaller gear's teeth to mesh with a larger gear's teeth also called a driving gear and a driven gear. To calculate your gear ratio, you'll need to divide the number of teeth on the driving gear by the number of teeth on the driven gear. We put the formula in the description for your reference. For example, if you have a 10 tooth driving gear that meshes with a 30 tooth driven gear, you'll achieve a ratio of three to one. 30 divided by 10 equals three. If you're working with an 1800 RPM motor, the gearbox reduces the speed by three times to 600 RPM. If the motor torque is 5.8 inch pounds, the gearbox increases this torque by a factor of three to 17.4 inch pounds. This doesn't account for gearbox efficiency loss, which can range from 1% to 50% depending on your gearbox. Your inline reducer will typically be 90 to 99% efficient. Your right angle gearboxes will typically be 50 to 90% efficient. The higher the ratio, the higher the efficiency loss. Consult a manufacturer data package to confirm the expected efficiency loss and ensure the gearbox will still meet your torque requirements. Next, we'll consider how it's being mounted. Foot, shaft, or flange mounted. Shaft mounted will hang in space by the low speed shaft connection and these are more common for light conveying applications. Foot mounting is when the gear drive is mounted to the foundation or base plate through bolts in the holes of the feet. As long as you have a foundation that can sufficiently support the torque passing through it, this is a sturdy option. The motor should be well connected to the gearbox. Connecting the motor to the base and the gearbox is not ideal, as this could cause misalignment issues. Okay, now what do you do with all this information? 
Traditionally, you'd use this information to locate your gearing using a manufacturer catalog, like this one here. You're matching up your output RPM, max torque, and other specs to find your gearbox. If you're having trouble locating manufacturing catalogs, you could also search at emotorsdirect.ca, where we've built a custom gear builder tool that does the heavy lifting for you. Just plug in your specs and you're on your way. We get a lot of questions about gearing. Leave your questions in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get you an answer. Make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, Canada's largest motor search engine. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time.